Labor disputes at the West Coast ports from California to Washington are causing a massive bottleneck of ships that are waiting to be processed. Yeah, and as a result, billions of dollars worth of cargo uh, is instead not on land and stuck in containers off port limits, triggering new concerns over supply chain uh, disruptions. Data from a marine traffic shows that the number of shipping containers waiting off port limits which is a term of art here, of Oakland, Los Angeles, and Long Beach rose to 86,000 last week. That figure is double what it was the previous week, so moving in the wrong direction there. That's right. The combined value of all that cargo is roughly $5.2 billion. If dock workers and port operation, operators can't agree on a new contract soon, economists say the impact on the U.S. supply chain will be devastating. So let's bring in Peter Goodman. He is a global economic correspondent for The New York Times. Peter, longtime reader, uh, first-time interlocutor. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, what are the dock workers demanding? They're demanding a piece of the action. I mean, the, the number that they would put alongside the $5.2 billion worth of stuff that's floating out there, uh, not getting to where it's supposed to be, is $500 billion. That's uh, the estimated profits of the largest uh, ocean carriers. These are the, the big, uh, the giant container vessels that move up boxes of factory-made goods from places like China to the West Coast of the United States. And the dock workers say, listen, we labored all through the pandemic. Uh, some of our people uh, got ill and died. Uh, we took the risks. We take the risks every day. And now it's time for us to get paid. Now, this is something that we've been through for different reasons before, but it's good to remember just how impactful this could be to the economy, how it slows down so much. What is that impact? Sure. I mean, we've seen this on and off for the last couple of years. We've yeah. seen long lines of ships. I mean, 70, 75 ships floating off the twin ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach. The, these two ports in Southern California are the gateway for roughly 40% of the imports reaching the United States. Uh, and so much stuff came in at once uh, in the early years of the pandemic as Americans you know, realized, well, we can't go to the mall, we, we're not going to restaurants, we're working from our homes. Uh, the money that we used to spend on things like vacations, we're now gonna spend on office chairs for our bedrooms, video game consoles uh, for our kids uh, stuck in the basement. Uh, and, and, and that resulted in this enormous surge of imports coming to the U.S. Uh, it overwhelmed uh, the works. The dock workers kept going, uh, but the result of all that stuff uh, floating on ships that couldn't get space to pull up to the docks was delays, shortages, losses for, for retailers uh, in many cases, and a lot of people discovering that the stuff that we thought we could just deliver to our doors by clicking a button here and waiting for a truck to arrive, you know, that didn't happen. That really broke down. And, and we're faced with potential disruption again if we don't see some sort of deal here. So, Peter, what if someone with a bullhorn and a dinghy goes out there and waves all these big ships over to the Panama Canal and they have to come all the way around to the East Coast uh, and take the back entrance? Uh, what would that do to the price of things and the availability of things? Well, that's already happened to a large extent. In fact, uh, we've gone through several months of uh, declines in, in volume of goods coming to the Southern California ports. And that's precisely because uh, when the dock workers contract uh, expired uh, last summer in July, a lot of shippers said, well, this looks bad. I mean, the, how do the dock workers get their piece of the action? They demonstrate their ability to impede commerce uh, they can slow down. They cannot deploy as many people. Now, the dock workers in their defense say that's precisely what the terminal operators, the, the companies that run these ocean terminals and who are negotiating with them are doing in order to blame the dock workers. You know, there's a lot of claims on both sides. But the result of that was shippers said, let's just bypass Southern California and start shipping stuff directly to the East Coast uh, to get closer to major cities on the East Coast. And there is a slight inflationary effect. I mean, certainly some of the inflation that we've seen, uh, not all of it by any stretch, but some of it is the result of these supply chain disruptions. And, and once you do move stuff to some other port and reconfigure your distribution network, there are costs and delays associated with that. All right. Peter Goodman, much appreciated. Thank you very much. Thank you.